Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're playing Tainted Grail, the Hall of Avalon, which is um, weird, the story of this game, actually. Uh, not the narrative. The na I mean, the narrative is weird, because that's the nature of this thing. But no, this game sort of spawned out of what was supposed to be the campaign mode of a different Tainted Grail game that has entirely different gameplay. Uh, I played it on the channel, love it, really fun. Tainted Grail is also a board game. Um, which is how it sort of uh, grew from, from a Kickstarter campaign. Um, and then, yeah, there's a roguelike card battler thing, uh, which is really fun. Love it. You can go check that out. It's somewhere on the channel. You'll find it. I have faith in you. Uh, and then this one is basically Skyrim, but in the same universe. And it is a hell of a lot like Skyrim. We're going to jump right in, and you'll see. They've lifted basically everything, which I think is, is absolutely the best thing they could have done because immediately it's really familiar to play um you aren't distracted by trying to figure out how you control stuff or how different like you know systems work you're just like oh cool i'm just playing skyrim but it's you know new universe to discover so you can you can focus on that bit so let's get into it of men his. Together with Merlin, they cleanse the land of the weirdness, a primordial force of chaos and possibility. But now, long after the death of the king, Camelot is in shambles as Avalon fractures into chaos. Old legends are gone, and the weirdness is creeping back into our lands. The bleeding heart of the plague has started beating once more. And the Red Death has returned. Rulers of the Island Asylum, an order of the Red Priests, are desperate to stop it. By any means necessary. Rotting in one of their cells is a stranger who might bring a spark of change to this cursed island stuck in everlasting autumn. Alright, uh, sure. Why not? We'll pick whoever. Uh, yep, um, oh, faces. I was like, all these, all these hairstyles look the same. Don't go for a different face. Sure, we'll go with that one. Uh, now it's hairstyles. Sure, let's go with this, uh, here we go, the sort of Merida-looking thing. Brilliant. Also, uh, always go with the orange hair. I can't help it. I like orange. Uh, no beard. Uh, definitely would have given her a beard. Because I think that would have been amusing. So, let's, uh, let's go. Look, we just have to get this over and done with. Unless you want a visit from someone upstairs. And, trust me, you don't. Just like before, no food until we're done here. And the moment you start getting on my nerves, we're going back to my tried and tested fists. So, tell me, what were you doing in the forest when the Red Shields caught you? Ooh, let's see. I was on my way to enlist in the army, hunting, avoiding city guards, trying to sell goods. Or, looking for an ancient worship site. Uh, that sounds like we'll hear more story, maybe. More, more about the world? Let's try it. Yeah, you look like one of those half-starved druids who survived the charred conclave. We would picked almost all of you up from the forest by now, so there aren't many of you crooks left out there. So, you're a tree hugger then. Uh, yes, I study healing magic, or no, I'd rather have burnt the tree down. Um, I like the idea of being, uh, sort of bitter. That sounds fun, you know, narratively. Big talk, as always. Yeah, I've never seen you people do anything but fireworks and illusions. Not much use during a real fight, as is evident from you being in here rather than out there. Okay, that was easier than I expected. Now, unfortunately, we'll have to stop. 
Oh, okay. He seems to have fallen ill. Oh, hi. I always found it puzzling that these people won't bathe. You, I understand, you're literally rotting in this damned cell, but then there's just no excuse for the stench. There they are, finally. I know, I know, you have a million questions forming in your head, but they'll have to wait. One of these keys will open your cell. When you get out, head left. I'll scout ahead. This is an RPG. I'm going right. <laughs> okay, so we can unlock that whenever. But uh, let's have a quick look around. I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Seven Commandments. So this this really just tells you uh, what the world is like. I feel. So first came the prophet, then came the word. The word is sacred. The Pope, his cardinals, and his priests receive the word. The word is the way. We are all brothers and sisters, starving for the word. The word is sustenance. The word is incest. Together, in holy suffering, we walk the pilgrim's path. The word is our strength. We repent by facing the trial of the plague. The word is our cure. The priests, clad in red, guide us uh, toward grace. The word is salvation. There are no other sanctities, only the prophet's word and the will of the red church. Do not doubt at your faith, and you will be rewarded. So, um, cool. Cool, so we have some, you know, we have an idea of their of their religion. Oh my. <laughs> so immediately we're going to grab all their clothes and uh, we are going to become him. And there we go. Lovely. Let's equip some things. So we got given burning ember, which I'm pretty sure is because we said we wanted to burn that tree down. So I think that was some little, little way to give us some uh, starting gear, basically. Which I really enjoy. If we look at our character, you know, we're, we're normal across the board. It's whatever. Um, all our stuff appears to be um, even. So there's no, you know, no bonuses we got. It's just choosing what we started with. We can take a broken arrow out of his head. So that's good. Uh, also, we've got this little quick select bar. So we can choose the club. Uh, or this burning ember. Oh, we can sneak. Which, well, good, he's dead. Uh, which is very, very skyrim -y. Which I like. Uh, again, wooden arrow. That one wasn't broken nicely. This stuff isn't better. If there's better equipment, it will have a little uh, little green arrow next to it, which I think is really nice. That's something that Skyrim doesn't do. Um, although I guess it does show stats anyway, so you can kind of work it. Actually, maybe it does. I haven't played Skyrim in a while, anyway. Uh, so, very beautiful lady here. Liliana in the Chamber of Ecstasy. Uh, Sir Osbert could not wait any longer. He shut the door behind him and jammed the latch home. In a few determined strides, he approached Liliana, capturing her lithe waist in a strong embrace. Panting heavily with desire, he lifted her as if she weighed nothing and threw her on the bed. This this person's been uh, been, been reading some, some naughty books, hasn't he? How about that? Uh, we don't have any lockpicks, so... Oh, there's a figure of a men here. Interesting. Interesting. That's a moonshine. Sounds good. Uh, cooking for the resistant. Simple recipes. We just learned a bunch of recipes, which is nice. Uh, author, Milbred Auntie Flissil. Not everyone was born with perfect taste buds or culinary sensitivity. If you belong to, to uh, the group of such individuals, don't worry. Here I am, Auntie Milbred. Coming up with an initiative for those with an exceptionally dull taste in food. That's that's the best cookbook ever. A, a, a cookbook that is designed to be as boring as possible. Uh, as I often repeat, some things were, were made to be eaten at fancy tables and others to scrape off the floor. Nevertheless, this is certainly no reason to be ashamed. For a moderate hunger, try serving yourself what is commonly known as beggar's fare. Certainly very common among people. Very uh, popular among people. Well, people like you. <laughs> floor lickers. All you need is groats, oats and a pot of boiling water. Once again, let me emphasize, in case you're not sure what I mean, the boiling water bubbles. An equally simple alternative could be mashed potatoes. If you feel particularly comfortable with a knife, you could try peeling the potatoes, trying to remove the thinnest possible layer of skin with delicate moves. This is starting to sound um, a bit uh, uh, masochistic. However, this is not necessary. Throw the potatoes into boiling water, as above, and wait for about 
20 minutes. Pour off the water. Please don't drink it. She wants to drink it. She wants your potato water. Then add some milk. Don't overdo it with this one. You don't want your mashed potatoes to turn to a starchy and milky mush, do you? Uh, no. Of course not. We're going to steal these cups. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, the guards have been there. Uh, drawing some, some naughty pictures. Uh, I've got a cooking pot. So now we have a bunch of recipes, and you can see if we had the ingredients, we could cook them. Handy, right? That's how cooking works, by the way. Five lock picks in there, and uh, <laughs> more naughty pictures. Well, that one's actually very. Um, this one's almost like Vitruvian Man. It's just very clinical. But this one, very, very fabulous. I'm pretty sure that's the same one that was in the book. Uh, there's a wooden club here. A couple clubs, in fact. We already have one, so uh, that'll be fine. And I'll hook. Lock picking. Imagine, whoops, broke one. Imagine a lock picking game like this. Okay, seriously, how am I breaking all these? There we go. Apparently, I'm bad at lock picking. Uh, a theft just went up, which is good to know. Just went up a couple times, in fact. Maybe it'll break our lock picks less now. Uh, seven commandments. Lots of seven commandments around here. Uh, there's a jar. I don't know if we'll need that. Some ale. That door doesn't seem to uh, be a door. Doesn't seem to open or anything. Oh, what's going on up here? Some skulls. Sure. Uh, you can sprint, of course. Oh, and also, uh, if we get a wooden club, he's having troubles. Uh, oh, beggars fair. Good. They're using they're using that cookbook to cook us things. Uh, so you can attack. If you hold the button down, you can heavy attack, you can release whenever you want, and uh, you can block, and also you can shove. But blocking does take stamina. So what's going on in here then? Well, seven commandments? I think they put that in all the cells. You know, in all of our hotel rooms. It's like it's like how... Um, uh, I, I think it still happens a lot in, in the US even now. But it used to be in British hotels as well. Always used to be very typical just to leave a... There'd always be a Bible. Like, on the bedside table. And it's very weird. Okay. Nice. That'll get us some experience, no doubt. Uh, ramblings of a weary mind. Treatment records. I'm not sure how well the treatment went. They seem to have a hole in their head. And, um... They're in the fetal position. More Seven Commandments. I'm not sure how much that helped. Probably not a lot. Although, lots of herbs for us to gram. That's nice. Lovely. Cobwebs. Uh, treatment records. Number one. The patient seems to be responding well to the initial treatment, while the physical symptoms of the Red Death have not lessened. Probably shouldn't be touching all this guy's stuff, huh? He's got the red death. Uh, it appears that we've made some progress regarding his mental state. I've decided to expedite the treatment by introducing black henbane applied transdermally. We will start with small doses. The patient will be required to record his dreams in a designated journal. Entry 2. The patient shows tremendous progress. However, what concerns me are his intense reactions and how prone he is to panic. Yeah, I think I'd be panicking too. A bunch of crazy doctors trying to... You know, just experiment on me, I guess. Uh, I will have to introduce a mild calming agent. I hope that a relaxed state will allow him to open his mind without fear. Entry 3. The patient's spirit appears to be weaker than initially assessed. After he wakes up, he either enters a brief catatonic state or cowers in the corner, muttering to himself. Oh, good. Sounds like he's doing great. And entry four. After last night, the patient became fully catatonic. He will not move, does not react to stimuli, and will not take food or water. There is nothing to be done. Death appears to be the most merciful solution. I will then perform an autopsy to evaluate potential changes in the patient's brain. Still, there must be something to be learned from all this. Yeah, stop, stop doing that to people. Just stop all of that. Ramblings of the weary mind. One. The dark nights here are endless. Everything breathes and cools crisply. A red monk came and put fire in my chest. That doesn't sound healthy. Um, but I knew it was a good thing. This must be that transdermal treatment he was talking about. Um, the first and only king visited me the night before. 
Arthur wept, then reached to me with his hands. Not two, but four. Uh, the Menhirs have, have four arms. The, the, the um, four dwellers, I think. Yeah, the four dwellers um, have four arms. Pretty sure they're the same thing. That's uh, uh, part of the conspiracy of this world. We'll, uh, we'll get into more of that, I'm sure. So never close to the king's grace. Then he disappeared. And three, the bleeding heart of the plague beats in frantic despair. One, two, one, two. I hear its rhythm from behind the wall. I know it. I feel it. One, two, one, two. Organic machinery that created this place and these people. Put your ears to the walls and listen. One, two, one, two. Listen. Ooh, mistletoe. Oh, were you, were you hoping? Here's one of the guards. So, uh... And we don't see anyone in here. Unless it was unless it was me on the other side. Or it could be this heart. Uh, and oh, and some spoiled meat. Lovely. Um, so there's a smashed jar by the looks of it with a heart in it. So that was Oh, my sneak skill went up. That's fun. Just because I crouched. Seven commandments. Note written in blood. To anyone who finds this note, you need to run before they start your treatment, and it makes you realise you need to gnaw your own legs off. Oh dear. I promise that you are not sick, and even if you are, they will not cure you. Save yourself, as I did. I stole a small glass jar while they weren't looking, broke it into tiny shards, and then swallowed them all. Soon I will be free. That's grim. That is grim. Ugh. Horrible. Ugh. Yeah, no thanks. That that really gives me chills. Seven Commandments. Always with the Seven Commandments. Okay, so. That's through here. I can use the guard's key to open this. Some wine. Lovely. Ooh, cabbages. Alright, bunch of onions and things. We've got some shirts. I don't think they can be better than our armour, somehow. So I'll probably leave them behind. Oh, a bunch of venison and pork and stuff. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, that's handy. An old letter. Let's read that. My dear Martin, I have finally... Uh, who is this? From Catherine, apparently. Uh, I have finally arrived at the island asylum and have received my preliminary medical examination. Father Vaughan said that my symptoms point to very early stages of the Red Death and that I did very well to come here in my own will. He promised to do everything in his power to help me and to make sure our son, I write son because I can feel with each heartbeat that it is him, Martin is born healthy. Uh, I know you had your doubts about me coming here, but I really am of good cheer. I will keep you up to date on my progress. Hope to see you soon. I love you and miss you very much. Forever yours, Catherine. I'm thinking of the name, uh, Le... Le Leolin. Leolin? Leolin. 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 Something. How do you like it? It's too hard to pronounce. Call her uh, Jeff. Let's have a look. Cabinet. Nice. Some coins. A bunch of milk and flour. Well, I mean, obviously I'm going to grab all of that. Peppermint. Ooh, honey. Very fancy. More groats. Oh, there's a cracked shield. Oh, hello. Boom. Sick. Um, on block, gain 5% damage. Oh, that's nice. So it helps you retaliate. Oh, I like that. Still gonna sneak, though. Alright, no one in there. Okay, is there anyone about? Not seeing anyone. Alright, let's break into here too. Nice. That was very easy. Oh, it's R to put your weapons away, by the way. Autopsy report. Uh, I drilled a burr hole into the left temporal bone. The skull appears to be full of thick, partially coagulated blood. I think that means they're dead. Not gonna lie. I opened the skull by removing the calvaria, then I drained out the unnatural excess of fluid. I saw through the cerebral falks using more grains cut. I severed the nerves in the brain stem. I lifted out the brain. Its shape is abnormal, swollen as if burst from the inside. It's not healthy, is it? I made incisions in the venous sinuses. 
and separated the putamen from the bone. The base of the skull is intact. Well, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you saved the skull. I place the brain in a mixture of alcohol and cedar oils for further examination. And, uh, nope, that's a heart. It's been saying there it is. Fish oil, full of omega-3. <laughs> Lovely. Um, these are a lot less saucy than the images in the guards' quarters. Unless you're into boils. Some more mistletoe. You really shouldn't hang mistletoe over your patients. It's, uh, it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. So that's all... I mean, everything here feels a little inappropriate. Amputation, knife, I mean... I've got a club, I'm sure I'll be fine. Yeah, let's open this up as well. Yep. Nice. Okay. Uh, he's lost his legs. Might have chewed them off. Uh, I received three patients suffering from mild symptoms of the Red Death. With this batch, I decided to test a new treatment derived from creatures touched by weirdness. Over the course of the last week, my patients were all given weird beast bone meal mixed in with their food. The results were as follows. Patient 1. I found that he was actually suffering from typhoid rather than Red Death. I burned the body. Oh, good. Patient 2. By the third day, she started behaving erratically, scratching at the walls, pulling her hair, and screaming incoherently. On the fifth day, it was like some inhuman force possessed her. She pulled the chains that were holding her off the wall, and she started to bend the iron bars of her cell apart. Fortunately, her heart gave out before we managed to escape. I may learn more from the autopsy. Patient 3. The bone meal seems to have little to no effect. The disease is progressing at its usual pace, but the patient's mind appears intact. I'll continue the treatment and monitor him closely. Conclusions. Despite the outcome, I do not deem this treatment a failure, especially in the case of the patient where the progression of the disease seemed to slow dramatically. Um, none of these <laughs> appear to be one, but okay, sure. Um, I, uh, If I could mitigate the adverse effects, I might get closer to finding a cure. As this is, you know, their mind being intact is a, is a you know, dramatic change. Oh, there's a brain. There's a heart. I don't know why I'm picking all these up. Souvenirs. Souvenirs. More brains. Okay, I don't need that many brains. Too many brains. I don't need that many souvenirs. I only have so many friends and family to, like, give souvenirs to when I get home. Uh, lovely. Um, okay. I think that patient's, um... Yeah, that patient definitely has something wrong with them. Okay. To medic saw, monster blood. Well, that sounds fun. Drown her tongue. Lovely. Drown her tongue. Hardly knew her. Uh, yep. Yeah, another brain. All right, I'm taking more brains. I know. So one, the mutational changes are not uh, not significant, although they span the internal organs. The heart enlarged to the size of two adult fists, increased pulmonary function, etc. Among the contents of the stomach are remains of undigested human flesh, most probably belonging to the deceased. Visible bite marks on his arms. Oof. Uh, two, mutation area. Overall, uh, an amalgamation of human and porcine internal organs, a two-chambered stomach with significant, uh, significantly increased capacity, and unnatural tissue fusing the hooves with the body. The heads joined together in shape worse than any nightmare. Oh, good. Lovely. Love that. Uh, also, you can tell that this is a medical specialist by all the, all the, um, the sigil, you know, glyphs on the wall. Yeah, that's the, I mean, they have these in all hospitals, right? Sure they do. More brains. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with the brains. I have enough brains. I'm definitely going to end up picking up more brains, aren't I? Oh. Nah, broke one. There we go. Found that sweet spot. Uh, right, what else we got? Is that a brain? Medic saw. I don't think I need that. Father Vaughan's notes. Uh, Catherine, that's the one who uh, who wrote that other letter. Uh, female, 22. Constitution, short, skinny, seven months pregnant. Uh, symptoms, typical of the Red Death. Pale red spots on the face. Uh, face, neck, and arms. Cause of death, childbirth. Shouldn't be giving birth at seven months. Uh, oh, that's the wrong... That's the wrong amount of months. Um, notes. Exposure to weirdness might have altered the woman's psyche. Anger outbursts and melancholia. 
As for physical alteration, the fetus seemed to be much more affected by weirdness than the mother, as if it absorbed it all. After the first standard session, the fetus started to grow rapidly. After the second session, its mass had tripled. It needed to be extracted from the womb. The mother did not survive the procedure. The torso and head of the fetus were unnaturally overgrown, but its limbs were weak and flabby. Despite its monstrous appearance, it turned out to be of good viability. Hmm, interesting. More research on subject 38 to follow. Good viability. Is it saying that it's viable for something else, or that it is, you know, it can live, it can survive? Um... I don't know if he's talking in the context of experiments or the well-being of the, the mutant child, though um, I'm not sure how well the mutant child did here. And the mother is chained up, so was the mother chained up when they had to take... I guess, I guess, yeah. Because she was all rage-filled, right? Oof. God, that's grim. Okay. It's Brother Sefton, I would like to remind you what I have mentioned numerous times before, namely that the alchemical station should be cleaned after each use, especially when you are so careless with caustic and toxic substances. I also recommend that you refresh your elementary knowledge about the ingredients of a healing concoction. Those are alcohol and sage, not poisonous plants and hearts. <laughs> That's where all the hearts are coming from. You gotta put them in something, right? I'll just I'll make a I'll make a healing potion, right? I'll make a healing concoction. Some hearts and and I don't know, hemlock. Sounds perfect. If this kind of negligence continues, I'll be forced to ask Father Vaughn to revoke your privilege to use the laboratory. May the word of the prophet be your grace. From Brother Aaron. That requires a key. Which uh, we may end up getting here. Looks like our friend may have travelled this way. It's my assumption. Oh, we've got some larger areas to explore. Yeah, there's uh, some red priests around the place. And there's the laboratory key. And there's an iron arrow. So I'm going to head back. Lots of gibbets. Uh, I'm going to head back. And we're going to have a look in this door. So. Oop. Alright. Let's set this man on fire. You know, just a bit. Some health potions. Blood clot. Alright. History of the Island Asylum. I mean, this is where we are. We should probably find out about it, huh? I mean, we can read a book. We can read a book while that guy's waiting to be murdered, right? Seems fair. And then the prophet said to her disciples, Go to the marshes where those marked by the plague await their demise and aid them. Build an asylum where peace can be brought to their bodies and their souls. Do not grieve and do not fret, for as long as you hold my teachings in your hearts, so long shall I live. And when she breathed her last breath, her acolytes buried her on the Isle of the Dead. Then they went to the dark morass, where, as per her command, they built a lazaret for those suffering from the plague. And so it happened that that, uh, that one day King Arthur and his court were passing by the island when suddenly he heard a beautiful voice calling him. The voice was coming from the prophet's tomb. And so Arthur went there and ordered his men to remove the coffin stone lid, but what he saw inside was not bones but a beautiful woman who seemed to have been snatched by death in slumber mere moments ago. And then Arthur heard her words loud and clear. Arthur, the plague is a daunting trial for us, uh, for all of us. My disciples brave it among the foul-smelling marshes and poisonous vapours, yet they do not complain. They humbly preach the word, asking nothing in return. So it falls upon me to ask on their behalf for a place worthy of their toil. The king of Avalon said, I will grant your request. And he told his sister, Morgane, to leave the four-dweller ruins on the Isle of the Dead. He ordered his men to ready the place for the priests clad in red, so they could continue their service to the people. So are we, uh, are we amongst the ruins of the Isle of the Dead? And this has been, this asylum has been built on it. That's what I'm going to assume. Uh, we could ask this guy, but uh, he has a red health bar, so he's probably a baddie. Ooh. It's back to canisters. It's where they put, um, it's where they put Boba Fett. Anyway. <laughs> Bam. Good amount of damage. Alright, so, also, uh, if we attack, whoops, if we block, rather, 
last minute, you can parry, though I'm bad at it, so um, I'll just club him to death. That's fine, too. Okay. Uh, Spectral Sword. That is another spell. That is another spell. So if we look at that, um, it'll summon a Spectral Sword. That's base damage 7 to 10, but currently um, this has yeah 10 to 14, so if we get better at magic, it'll probably be a, a better alternative to whatever equipment we end up um, you know, running around with, but until then, there's no point. So, chapter one. Uh, so this is uh, Elder Brother Eric wrote this. So although we have long relegated the revered priest Moron, the holy to the margins of history, I caution against ignoring the wisdom and solutions he presented in the study outlining his once famous method. As Murren lived during the reign of King Arthur, the language he used may now seem outdated and rather difficult. However, the content of the text emphasized crucial points regarding the separation or rather extraction of the subject's mind. And yes, the holy wrote his treatise while remaining under the heavy influence of druidic practices. However, we should not forget that it is all full of... Uh, it is full of contempt towards that, now mostly eradicated, fortunately, quackery. On every page, yeah, cause the glyphs on the wall and all the rest, that's all totally legit science, of course. Uh, on every page, Moran's words regarding the past so-called masters are dripping with venom. Yet in his infinite wisdom, he plucked what was most valuable from the treasure trove of their knowledge. This is another reason why we should not disregard Moran's work in this day and age. He was able to evaluate which of the druidic practices and observations were valuable and which were deservedly burnt along with them on the fields of the charred conclave. Moran stressed that the subjects, as he called them, should become familiar with the Red Priest's practices. They should be able to see and feel most of the proceedings. Oh god. If a subject loses consciousness, he or she should be revived. Partial anesthesia is permissible so long as the subject still remains able to see. If a promising subject is in danger of hemorrhaging to death, their wound should be tended to, so they can serve the cause for as long as possible. It's horrible. So here the patients, well, subjects, you know, um, patch them up so they could be useful to experiments for longer. Keep them alive so they could feel everything so you can collect more knowledge. Um, which I assume is probably why that woman was still chained up, because they would have kept her awake um, as a point of principle. Oof. Horrendous. Um, not a fun place, guys. Not a fun place. Uh, Roundup's records. I'm assuming, yeah, these are all the people that they've nabbed, basically. Ugh. Grim. Very, very grim. And a letter. It is time, my brothers. I hear you cry, woe is us. Woe is us, for we have escaped death only to f uh, for it to follow us to the way, uh, all the way to the promised land. But I say this, all is not lost. I say this, we have been delivered to our salvation, to the only place where we can battle the Red Death and emerge victorious. For there is one thing we did not have in the homelands, one thing native only to Avalon, one thing that is the answer to all our prayers, the weirdness. That's not the word, though. They said that the word was the important bit. Yeah, not the weird, the word. The wordness, not the weirdness. Many think that the weirdness is nothing but another bane, an instrument of our inevitable doom, but I believe it is our only hope for survival. We should not fear it, but embrace it and welcome it into our minds. This will heal our bodies. Seek items at the edge of the weirdness, touch them. Let them heal us. I call upon all the brave and the faithful, spread the word. Prepare your tools, eradicate doubt and fear until all that is left are minds ready to accept the weirdness as our saving grace. Oh, all right then. Keep. Uh, more brains, more brains if you want some. Taste of spirits too, and uh, alchemy station, and a pen. So, looks like we can actually get a couple of healing tinctures. So let's do just that. And you'll notice that this keeps changing because it just takes alcohol and sage, apparently. So now we have many of them. Cool. All right. Our alchemy got leveled up. Uh, okay. Uh, sort of uh, blood drain. Good. Good. It's very... Oh, dear. Oh, my word. This is littering. This is definitely littering. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, bone meal. Lovely. Not spoiled meat. Spoiled meat and bone meal. Uh, the encyclical of the second pope. Yet 
Many are unruly, corrupt, and indolent. They claim to know the Prophet, but their deeds tell a different story. Sullied are their minds and their consciences. And the Prophet sees all and casts filth upon their flesh. Their skin is covered in red marks. It festers and flakes up their bodies. The fever consumes them from the inside like an unquenchable fire. The Red Death not only takes their lives, but also deprives their souls of the chance for salvation. There is, however, hope for the impure. But the Prophet says, renounce your unruliness, dishonesty, and indolence. Take my word to your lips and into your hearts, and your souls will be purified as mine was purified. And thus has the Prophet, trust in my disciples as you trust in me, for they will lead you towards the cure. If you bring harm to them, whether with deeds, words, or thought, it will be as if you brought harm to me, and for that you will be severely punished. Interesting. Um, sweet tooth. What's some mushrooms about? Sheep's head. This nice tunnel we've got here. Oh, by the way, I changed the field of view slightly. Um, I put it up a bit. So it makes it look a little bit more cinematic. Get a, get a you know, slightly wider angle. Um, you know, if you're wondering, if you're seeing other clips of this and think that uh, it's it's a bit wide angle, it's because I made it a bit wide angle. All right, so there's a couple there. There's one over there too. Our oh, sneak is leveling up. So I'm going to start by setting this one on fire. Well, I missed. Nice. Haha. <laughs> you can't get me. Okay, maybe they can. The word protects me. My faith gets me straight. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was a parry. The word protects me. That wasn't. Okay, they didn't hear. Good. Yeah, I really like combat in this game. Uh, I really do. It feels slightly more... Uh, like, swings and things feel a bit more belaboured than, like, Skyrim. That I feel like things act, like, a bit erratically. Um, this feels a little bit more... No, intentional. You know, the actions feel more intentional. And I like that. It feels like they've learnt from sort of... Uh, um, Dark Souls, things like that. But it also makes it feel a bit more like a like a strategy game in ways, you know? It's not about reflexes. It's about sort of creating space and things. Nice. So yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. You know, simple but effective. It means you can focus on you know, the world building and story and stuff, which you can tell, I'm focusing a lot on the world building and stuff. You may have noticed I've, I've been reading a good few articles as we've been exploring this place. I'm very interested in all that. Uh, okay, so you can just pick things to cook, or you can look at recipes. So we do have a few bits of bobs. Uh, these will all heal health, so we get some cabbage rolls. Lovely. Actually, that sounds really nice, actually. Sort of, um... Almost like a meat sushi. <laughs> right, but you know, cabbage instead of nori. Sounds nice. There's a bit of grain. A bit of meat. Wrapped up. Alright, that'll do. Uh, blood, hearts, and guts. Alchemy of viscera. So loads of loads of different recipes here. Um, so this I'm not gonna bother reading. I think we can we can do without reading some things. Got an absent peppermint, though. Got to. Oh, I thought that was a page of something that I missed. Uh, Alchemy Station? Okay, not seeing else. Seeing anything else interesting over there. So, let's go through here. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so if we go upstairs, pretty sure on the left, this will be over the, yeah, over that room, and there's the body that we saw earlier, so um, we could have just gone straight through and gone down those stairs, and we would have ended up in the same place. <laughs> so, a bit of a detour, but we did get to do some cooking. 
I think that's our boy. Yeah, the guy that saved us. So, so we're okay. We're safe. Uh, some wooden arrows and a short bow. And we can rest. Cooking pot over here too. Oh yeah, so uh, quick slots. We can put things like mashed potatoes. Yum. And uh, a simple meal. Sure. And then, nom nom nom. There we go, we're healed up. Isn't that nice? Um, yeah, we're good. Hey buddy. You took your sweet time, eh? <laughs> that is I true. Understand. I did too when I was leaving this place for the first time. You have to admit, the Red Priests are quite resourceful when it comes to death and dying. Uh, who are you? Why did you help me? Or are you a prisoner here? Yeah, let's, let's see more about this. Great question, truly. But in case you haven't noticed, we're still within the walls of the Island Asylum. When we're out, then we'll talk. I'm told this path leads to the beach. I don't know how, but if it's true, then I'll wait there for you until dusk. Good luck. Okay. Well, all right then. Nice chance around mushrooms. Lovely. Ooh. Okay. Now we're into the ancient ruins. That this asylum was built on top of. A dull longsword. That is apparently better than this. Interesting. Uh, some jars. I'll assume they're useful. I'm going to take the hammer. Uh, so 10 to 17 damage. Although they have speeds as well, don't they? That's medium speed. Uh, oh, that's heavy. Okay, so it's not weight, it's speed. So, okay. I guess this is better in all regards. Nice. Although we also... I really like that you have a bunch of different loadouts as well. It gives you some nice flexibility. Um, you have different spells and stuff that you can just swap to. But we have a bow now that we can try out. There's someone at the end of the corridor there. Very spoopy, very atmospheric. I love to see it. Interesting with the, the horns. I assume this is possibly a druid, possibly a four-dweller, hard to say. You know, we'll, we'll find out more, I'm sure. Let's say the architecture and everything, it almost feels sort of, uh, with all these sort of tentacles and stuff. It's like Skyrim meets Geiger, you know? Show me the leg. Tainted Red Priest. Yep. Whoop. I got tired. Not as tired as him. He's having to have a lie down. Take some bandages. And commentary to Brother Lustin's underground wonders. Maybe this will tell us about the, the underground wonders. Contrary to Brother uh, Lustin's... This is from uh, Brother Abe. Uh, Brother Lustin's assumptions that the lower level of the island asylum is nothing more than a narrow yet impressive system of vaults limited only to the area of the building complex above. It appears there is no end to its tunnels and corridors. Moreover, I have long suspected that it might uh, not only span the entire island, but reach far beyond its boundaries. While I would not want to belittle Brother Lustin's commendable achievements, during his exploration of the lower levels, he seems to have been all too eager to accept potential uh, dead ends to be exactly what they appeared. Furthermore, my own research has confirmed time and time again that most of the places he marked as closed off passages proved to be buried tunnels leading even further into the complex. As our doctrine dictates, determination yields results, and we have been rewarded generously for our own. At the end of one of those tunnels, once dismissed as closed off, we, re we have reached a vast chamber, and in the middle of it, a men here. It is a magnificent monument, yet quite unusual. It is truly an underground wonder, as it may revolutionise our perception of those wondrous statues. Interesting. Is that it? Spoilers, it's not it. Uh, some weird plasm. Not sure what we can do with that. Uh, so, notes of Father Volad. This diorama of an ancient four-dweller keeps nagging at me. Why does it look so dead? All the depictions we saw before seem to be of living creatures. And this skull, so similar to ours, yet almost it's almost disconcerting. 
It looks like a menhir, but the menhirs were raised by Merlin himself back in the old days, so that's impossible. Then how? How could ancient foredwellers predict what Merlin would build in the future? I love this, like, ultimate faith in Merlin, because of course, you know, sort of Arthurian legend, he is the... He's the wisest, right? So, um, anything he's doing must be all about him, in some way. Uh, finally, we have it. The ultimate proof that Merlin actually couldn't have built the men here himself. We found one buried deep down in the labyrinth. Brother Hugar is examining it as I write this. So if we are the first to explore the depths of the Isle of the Dead, it clearly indicates that Merlin couldn't have invented the men here. This knowledge will shake the faith that in that old bastard across all of Avalon. The word of our prophet Kai will finally prevail. Um, so it makes me think that maybe the, the guy who discovered these ruins that was saying, oh no, dead end, oh, better go back, was maybe trying to keep that a secret, which I think is kind of cool. Okay. Because yeah, it feels like every bit of text in this game is very, like, intentioned, you know? Uh, Brother Terrell's Diary. Poor Brother Jer, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce that, fell into the abyss. Oh, I guess it's... I'm sure Kai will take care of his unfortunate soul, since he died for the good of the entire order. We now know that we can't try to lay planks over to reach the other side of the chasm. They simply will not hold. Alright. There's some unknown force blocking the passage. I can see the outline of the bridge, so it should be possible to cross it. Yet when Brother Jer, may Kai watch over his soul, threw rocks in that direction, there seemed to be nothing there but air. There must be a way. There must be some mechanism or spell we had to discover. I can't give up now. All the secrets on the other side are calling to me and begging to be uncovered. I will be the first person to cross that bridge, even if it kills me. Isn't the point that you need to cross without dying? Uh, a bit wibbly. A bit wibbly. So, now I'm going to do something a bit silly after quick saving. Is that good? Oh, we did just get controls for dashing. That didn't help either. Although maybe I should have pressed that, then dash. No. So guys, uh, not gonna lie, we can't get over that bridge. I do really like this though. Can I, can I just point out how great it is that it's not like Skyrim where you, uh, if you fall into a chasm, the game just goes, well, yeah, you died, you fell in a chasm, you idiot. This one treats it like a puzzle and it just returns you back. It's just like, yeah, whatever, you could have quick saved, who cares? Um, it's just not gonna waste your time. Just goes, yeah, alright, just come on, settle down now. That's obviously not the solution. So, I like it. I like it a lot. Has some nice, you know, just nice gameplay things, just just keeps it focused. Uh, so this is creepy, the sort of wall of leeches. Don't think don't think wall of leeches is it's just not the best building material, you know, leeches. into the ruins. I really like the lighting as well. It's fun. Uh, okay. Another chap down there. Uh, no way that he can reach us. So. I'm going to set him on fire. Or myself slightly. I'll start shooting him. This is very rude. Yeah, we're a bit rude. Alright. Alright. It'll do. But yeah, this game feels like such a like an old school RPG. I really like it. I just I love the tone. I mean yeah, just cheesing that guy. Don't care. You know? That just feels old school RPG to me. Not everything has to react crazy, not every uh character has to have some like ranged move to stop you from cheesing it or whatever. It's, nah. Nah, just give me a dungeon. And let me decide in a very, like, you know, basic sort of D&D &D way how I'm going to overcome the enemies. And just let me enjoy the world. Combat doesn't have to be, you know, ludicrously complicated. It just, it just needs to... It just needs to give you something to do. Some sense of threat while you're enjoying the adventure. I like it. My sort of game. Too many games try and be cool and juicy. I'm an old man. I can't, I can't be fussed with that stuff. No, no. This is much nicer. So, Brother Hugar's diary. And so the question arises, is there any significance in this men here having three arms instead of four? It's a bit bizarre, isn't it? If so, how could we learn more? How could we examine it further without touching it? 
Poor Father Abe was uh, brave enough to touch it with his bare hands. His disappearance shocked everyone. It's not that he died, he's just not there anymore. It's like he never existed. After that, our Pope, bless his name, forbade everyone from touching it again. But I must admit that I can hear it whispering. It calls to me by name. I don't know how much longer I can resist. I don't, uh, I know I should report it to my superiors. I just, I just don't want to. I'm sure someday I'll hear the call and answer it. I'll tell them it was Kai, even if it wasn't. I just need to know. Well, so this is the bed here. Um, and we're going to touch it. And here we are in the void. That cloud looks a bit like a rabbit. Anyway, uh, this is very Pillars of Eternity. I'm not just saying that because of all the pillars. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> so, interesting to see these sort of uh, Wicker Man style statues and then, like, really detailed ones. This, uh, this to me makes me think of that statue that w looked all dead. They said the statues were fine before. Right, but now they are, have degraded. So it's like these are us mortals. And these are the four dwellers. You know, they're sort of memories being lost to time. And that making their architecture crumble away as well. You know? Their art depicting them in real time somehow. Maybe. Could be talking crap. Uh, well, I mean, these are the worst. Can we all agree? There's some, like, pathologic stuff going on here. Okay, let's go. God, they're speaking Welsh. Uh, now what's this then? Oop. Glittering stone. Alright. people prostrating themselves. I have been waiting a long time for someone to find me. Are you here to help me leave this place? So oh, maybe. Uh, what are you? I wish I could answer. I cannot remember. I know I am not complete. I remember I once knew who I was. At some point but I do not anymore. I just am. What is this place? I do not know. I think it is some kind of prison deep in the wilderness. Why are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> I got transported here by a morbid statue. Uh, so the men here, is, by the way, um, oh, actually, no, it did, it did say in the cutscene. I'm being an idiot. No, it did say in the intro cutscene. They, they basically protect from the weirdness. They, they cast it away. There's one in sort of the center of every town. Keeps it safe from the weirdness. Uh, you're a prisoner? I might be. I do not know. Was I sent here for a reason? Did I end up here by accident? Like you? Uh, why do you want to leave? <laughs> it's lovely here. I've been here for what seems like an eternity. I feel I am getting restless. You are looking for a way out yourself. I think we might be able to help one another with that. I shall do something now. But trust me, the discomfort will be worth the outcome. Besides, it's my birthday. Temporal hold unlocked. Okay. Sure. And off we go. Off to adventure to the Colosseum. I wonder what's going to happen in this Colosseum. Also, uh, again, with the weird um, 
leech architecture. Lovely. It's pretty cool though. But you know what I mean? Skyrim meets Geiger. You know, the, the artist behind Alien. Alright, sword. Parrying is one of the most useful skills in combat. That is thing I've tried before. And I have done before. Not a lot, but you know, sometimes. Didn't quite work. That did. See, there was full down. Also, it is showing that guy's stamina as well. Which is handy. Good. Temporal hold allows you to slow down time. Use it however you want to attack, escape, and so on. But remember that it will need some time to recharge. Activate, deactivate it with middle mouse buttons. This is the new thing we just got. It's very fancy. So, uh, oh no. Thousands of enemies. very talented. Bam. Nailed it. I am sorry I did not ask for your permission to do that, but I hope it was worth it, as promised. I mean, I had a great time. Uh, what did you do? I found a bit of emptiness within your heart. A place where I could dwell for a while. What are you? It seems that I am a piece of a shattered soul, judging by my abilities. I used to belong to what your kind would call a foredweller. What do you want from me? I have already told you. I need your help to leave this place. And when we are out of here, I will need your help finding the rest of me to make me whole again. Uh, how am I supposed to find the rest of you? Look for what is left of me whenever you step into the weirdness. I know your kind tends to avoid it, but you do not have to be afraid. I will be your shield against the darkness. And what after we leave? I will try to help as much as I can, but I need you to hold up your end of the bargain. <laughs> I mean, I will. I never said yes, I'll forget about it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. We shall meet again, then. Find the weirdness and look for me within the darkness. Awesome. We made a friend, guys. We made a friend. The Four Dwellers' Soul asked me to find more of the pieces in the weirdness. So, I mean, this, I assume, is some sort of um, limbo. Um, the fact there's a soul in here. Um, and we're able to recover that from here, and it can't leave without us. I mean, you know, you can't leave Limbo without a body, right? Ah. Okay, and back we are in here. Okay. And... We can go back to this bridge. Which is now going to function wonderfully, because we have four dweller... dwelling in us. He's foredwelling in our body. Not sure how I feel about that, now I say it out loud. Uh, right, anyway, moving on. Moving away from the existential dread. Uh, let's see, anybody else here? Nope, just a... Orrery? And some big, big boys. A couple of big boys. Fun. So they're keeping this thing spinning. I don't want to bother it. Because I fear that would be a mistake. Um, so this is very fancy. These little needles here. Very strange. Very Geiger. And these chains. The way they got the little notches in them. In the sides. Uh, they look like spines or something. You getting that vibe as well? They're like spinal columns. They got that look about them. Fun. 
So this thing in the middle, I wonder if that is the limbo. If these things are literally maintaining that like other realm, so the the Bordeaux of spirits can linger in it. Again, might be talking crap, but you never know. Looks, you know, could be something in it. That could just be the their like you know power generator. That could be just what's keeping the lights on, for all I know. Could be both. Okay, I get the weird plasm. Another chap down there. Explore around the top first, though. Interact. We must abandon the vision, because what is beyond the sea came to us, and we do not want it. We must leave to defend ourselves. They are coming. The Titans will stay. Titans, probably two chaps behind. I'm, I guess there are others. Um... So it's interesting. So what is beyond the sea that came to us that they don't want? I'm pretty sure is humans. Uh, though possibly the Red Death as well. Um, it could be that we are a, a metaphor of said death to the poor dwellers. Um, I don't think this place was sort of better for us um, showing up. So guard the peace of the working titans, for without them we would not have the power within our walls. All right, maybe they're keeping the lights on. Away from Twathen, only the power of what is underground allows us to reach where weirdness does not. Possibly that other realm. It's, you know, maybe both. Even when we leave, the Titans will not stop working. It is how they were created. With their power, one day we will manage to learn what lies beyond the sea. Which implies they want to get to where humans were. Which is interesting. Makes you wonder if the sea is actually a sea. You know? Is it actually like an ocean that they traversed, or is it some sort of metaphysical thing? I'm not sure. So, I uh, love the portal. Love a good portal. Who doesn't love a good portal? Okay. Whoop. Oh, he's, he's coming for us. Ow. Rude. Alright, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Flipping heck. Ow. Oh, went right over my head. <laughs> like a bad joke. You hear that, mate? You're a bad joke. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we got him. And uh, and he also has a burning ember and a rusty short sword. I don't think we need that. But, um, yeah. Oh, more weird stuff over here. So we leveled up. So we're definitely going to want to have a look at that. So let's have a look at that. Uh, character. Uh, attributes. So strength enhances damage dealt in close combat. And armor and reduces stamina cost for attacks and blocking. I mean, yeah, we'll probably go with that. Uh, dexterity, so we have one one attribute point to spend. Um, increasing attack speed, um, dexterity does. Uh, range damage goes up and resistance to status effects goes up. And it decreases stamina cost with dashing and shooting arrows. Spirituality amplifies our maximum mana, our mana regeneration, our magic armor, and spell power, so just all magic. Perception boosts your critical damage chance and reduces noise while sneaking and increases success rate for lock picking. Endurance puts up health, stamina and carrying capacity um, because we do have carrying capacity by the way. Um, and so all those brains we're carrying is it is going to weigh us down eventually. We can only carry so many brains. I mean one by default. Additional brains is that'll put up your encumbrance. So improves your chances of finding more loot. Plus three percent, lowers store prices and boosts crafting abilities. Isn't that fun? But yeah, we're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with strength. That's fine. And then we can also put up skills. So there's skill trees for all of uh, everything, which is nice. And these will go up. We'll unlock more when we get to a certain point. Um, you know, on our stats, which I think is a really fun way to do it. So strength. There's heavy hitter. Heavy attack damage can stack up to 200% of health longer. Iron will. Blocking drains less stamina, which sounds really useful. After killing an enemy, gain more max stamina. Uh, I'm going to go with stamina surge. There we go. Then we leveled up. 
now let's jump into this portal. What's the worst that could happen? Yippee! Okay, so... Here we are, outside. So it is worth mentioning, this game is actually um, open world. Though I don't entirely now know how open. I get the impression that it's more like... Um, more more like a Dark Souls. I know it's easy to make that sort of um, comparison. I mentioned Dark Souls earlier. The tone is obviously very, um, you know, exploring a sort of forsaken dead world. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I think it's more like that, where it's like branching rather than just like, oh, go in literally any direction. Well, I, think it's, I think it's more branching. But, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. We'll see one day. There's a statue up there that I want to go have a look at. And, uh, but first, actually, explore. Hello. Hi there. Bull's Funnel. There is a note. Letter uh, to the Prior. Venerable Prior, I have taken the liberty of leaving my post on the island asylum to deliver some disturbing news. My brothers have taken their leave, uh, leave of their senses. Their souls have been poisoned by an unknown voice that is not the word. I have evidence of this. Was it Prophet Kai's teachings that told us to subject her followers to elaborate torture while fighting for their health and their souls instead of concerning ourselves with some wicked power of the weirdness were we not supposed to focus on finding a cure for the plague? Please, look at this appeal. I'm sure you did not compose it. I also do not recognise the fanatic seal. It is clear that someone is poisoning our brother's minds and trying to stifle the word. I bring this letter to you along with the evidence so you can make a fair judgement. So yeah, something's clearly been corrupting them. What I find a bit iffy is the fact that the um, the men here that we touched that teleported us to that realm with the, you know, the spooky dude who's giving us slow motion powers. Um, that guy uh, was whispering to them, right? The men here was whispering to people. Was it those same whispers that sort of caused them to do all the really horrendous experiments? Canine meat. Oh, lovely. Just some lovely dog meat. And we can rest here. Lovely. Not going to. Not, not sure I see the point. There might be a point to it. There may be a point to it. There's a chair over here. There's some moonshine. And uh, a corpse. Let's go say hi. We can't say hi to corpses. Hang on. Attempt to try and go under there. One out leather pants. Okay, apparently these are an upgrade. We can wear corpse pants. There we go. Uh, there are some characters over there, which we will get to. Huh. Oh, this should totally be a secret. Okay, devs, if you're watching this, hide something in the cave. Come on, man. Because like, the game already kind of suggests coming down here, you know. Oh. Although it doesn't seem like getting out of the water is easy. Okay, I'm going to go up this way then. <laughs> Alright, good. Athletics is going up because of all the running, which is pretty funny. I'm not sure I want to go to that beach yet. I don't want to strike up a conversation with him yet. Oh my word, come on. Alright, fine, we're going to the beach. Oh, maybe not. So, this isn't quite like Skyrim where... Uh, Oh, it's just a log sticking out of the rock. This is quite like Skyrim, where you can just sort of, like, climb everything indefinitely, you know? But, uh, you can do a bit of parkour. I found climbing up the side of a mountain was a bit ridiculous, honestly. Most of the time in Skyrim, it was a bit, a bit daft. I think sometimes, you know, open world doesn't need to be open world. It just needs to allow you to get to places that are interesting. Not say you can go anywhere, because then you've got to find, you've got to find interesting things to put everywhere, and that can just be a bit silly. You know, rain in the scope. So hastily scribbled a note. Her word is sacred. Why nobody listens anymore? Don't know. So uh, I'm assuming that this here uh, is the statue of is a statue of the prophet. Uh, the arm there seems a bit. Um, broken. The fact that's missing an arm, and the other things had three arms instead of usually four. There's definitely some, you know, symbolism going on with their arms being removed. 
Very odd. Sort of the loss of an arm is like just the loss of power, perhaps? You know, being literally disarmed? Not sure. Certainly worth uh, thinking about. So we're going to pick some daffodils. Clearly it's the spring. So that's nice. Do love a daffodil. Also bluebells. They always come out at time. Very nice. Uh, right. Gonna explore over here. Oh, hello. Little cave with some some mushrooms in it. Perfect. And here we are. In a random grotto. Lots of runes and things written about. Our oh, sneak skill keeps going up. Hermit Diary. That's why we're here. Read all their embarrassing secrets. So, I've been roaming Avalon for far too long, and I've had enough. I can't find any of my brothers, and nobody's left a message at our agreed place. Is it possible that I'm the last of the living druids? I tried to lay low near Kuanact. People uh, there seem stern, but there's more to them than meets the eye. They never believed the vile rumours about our congregation, nor did they take part in the charred conclave. So, I'm assuming the charred conclave was just a, a um, wholesale slaughter of druids. It's been mentioned a few times. I thought I'd, you know, actually address it. Um, assuming they all just got burnt, sort of Salem style. But those red fools came there too. Again, I had to flee for my life. My old bones can't take this much longer. With the help of Hob in the sunken village, I made my way to the island asylum. Ha! That was the best decision I could have made. They'll never seek druids on their own territory, will they? Hob wasn't even surprised when I asked him for the favour. Such a nice fellow. My days are nearing an end, and those red bastards never found my hiding place. I was able to live out my days in relative peace. Even though I've been lonely here, I will miss my cosy cave. My instinct tells me that this will be my last entry. My guts tell me I will soon join my brothers. My heart tells me that they will consider my diversion a great plan. The last of the famous druidic pranks on a sorry island. It was worth it. Well, good for him. So, um, yeah. Just a lot of... A lot of fun little world building. Big, big fan. Yeah, I can't wait to dive into this game proper at some point. But for now, let's uh, finish up there on this island. Is. Now that we're all here, meet your new comrades, conquer in Syria. Get some rest, people, and prepare for the journey. We're leaving at dusk. Not so fast, brother. I'm not getting near a goddamn boat unless I know where I'm going. Away from here, brother. Isn't that enough? A free wish. But since we're all here and we have some time to kill, it would be nice if you finally explained what the hell's going on. You've helped us leave our cages, great. But even though we're grateful, you owe us an explanation. What do you want from us? To show some damn gratitude for one thing. Caradoc, we weren't born yesterday. No one would risk getting into trouble with the priests for nothing. Why did you save us? I need you to kill King Arthur. You're insane. He's insane. The King Arthur that has already been dead for 600 years, King Arthur. Precisely. But he's dead. You probably wouldn't have heard about it among the tribes, little picked. But every single time things go down the shitter on this island, a bunch of cowards in Camelot bring our once and future king back from the dead. It's happened before. It will happen again. And soon. What a load of... <sighs> ah, fine. Have it your way. Let's say I believe you. You can't be serious. He believes that. There's no point in arguing with a madman. But that still doesn't explain why you saved us, Caradoc. I wish I knew why I was ordered to save you three specifically. Personally, I don't see the appeal. But I don't question my orders, and if you get on my boat, you won't question mine. Understood? Now get some rest. The tide's not right just yet. But it will break and start working in our favor by dusk. Fine. But where are we going, exactly? To the Horns of the South. Nice. A bunch of glorified fishermen who hate my people. Why would we stop there? Do they teach you, Del Reader, anything? To take the Excalibur, obviously. Obviously. He's truly insane. 
You'll see for yourselves soon enough. Now pin these emblems to your clothes. They will grant you free passage to the horns. And get some sleep. You all look like you're about to keel over. And we have a long journey ahead of us. Well, Alright then. Well, who should we chat to first? Let's talk to this lunatic. Put some clothes on. Also, you got red on you. You are right there, Pop. Ready to kill a king. <laughs> so you believe, Caradog. Or well, how did the priest manage to catch you? Or do you need any help with your wounds? Or can you tell me about uh, the Dal Raita? Yeah, I think we need to, because I have no idea who these people are. Which tribe do you want to know about? Volker, Svein, Dude? You'll find as many of them as fleas on a mutt. And the only thing we all agree on is that Camelot needs to be put in its place. It's about time we reminded them why they wanted us to come here. So assuming they're just, you know, Vikings. See, they're the Danes or something, I don't know. Uh, why do people hate Camelot so much? We came to this blasted island as one people. But Camelot forgot that the moment they stopped needing us for their wars. They think their shit doesn't smell, and that we're just a bunch of stupid savages that are happily get killed for a bag of coins and a pretty promise. Bunch of smug pricks. Fair enough. Uh, so you believe Karadrok? How did the priest manage to catch him? It's been hundreds of years since I came to this island, so it's weird this guy still holds that bitterness about that particular moment. Um, you know, I guess just like mistreatment generally, be bitter about that, but it's, it's odd that it's like connected to, oh, yeah, don't need me to be fighting. But I, I mean, I'm not sure it was you that was fighting their wars for him, actually. So how did the priest manage to catch you? With great bloody difficulty, that's how. What's it to you anyway? You think you can try your luck now? I wouldn't count on it. Uh, lie. Heard some someone say you didn't even put up a fight. Well, persuade. Come on, it must be a legendary battle. Let's try that. A dozen? Ha! They wish. Those bastards laid a trap, hoping I'd be easy pickings. They ended up needing damn near a full army to take me down. Spineless pricks. They make my blood boil. I swear to you, one day I'll come back to this place, slaughter them all, and then burn it to the ground. Uh, I'm also realising that he could just be uh, Gaelic, couldn't he? He could, it, it could just be Scottish, because he sounds Scottish. <laughs> so it could just be clansmen of Scots, because I guess, uh, you know, in in the times of Camelot, right? It's not like a unified country. Anyway, you don't uh, look like someone who'd easily fall into a trap. There was maid, there were women. One thing led to another, and I woke up with my pants down, surrounded by gobshites in the head. I was fighting with my bare ass hanging out, and I still managed to kill a dozen of them. Useless knobs. Must have added something to the mead. Uh, Alright then, well, I'll see you on the boat. That you will, Bob. That you will. I'm gonna ask everyone everything. So, Syria. I have a bad feeling about all this. I wish there was some other way of getting off this cursed island. So if you've played uh, the, the first Tainted Grail game, or watched, you know, videos on it, uh, you might recognise her voice. I'm pretty sure she's a voice actor that's been in, um, uh, she was a sort of narrator, I think, in, in the previous game. Anyway, uh, about those horns on your head, we've got to ask, right? What about them? Uh, <laughs> see, Conk is fascinated by them, but he doesn't know how to ask, he's rather shy. <laughs> I feel like I should be offended, but that's the first thing that's made me laugh in weeks, or months even. So I guess I should thank you instead. There's not much I can say, really. I don't like the horns. They're heavy, but I have to learn to live with them. I can't just saw them off, because I already know that they'll grow back again. I only hope nobody will sell me to a circus. You're taking it rather well. <laughs> I've seen my share of mutations caused by weirdness, both in people who got caught in the fog and those who stepped into it of their own volition. Some came out with a tail, some ended up turned inside out. So I know for a fact that it could have been worse, much worse. In the end, they're just horns, and my lungs are still in my ribcage. 
really nice way to establish that like the weirdness has this sort of you know mutating quality to people the fact that uh, that spirit said that we would be protected in there it doesn't mean that if we go in there we're not going to find a bunch of like insane mutants um, that are going to be wanting to murder us I'm not sure we protect against being murdered but I don't know we can go in, in like slow motion mode or well, I guess we're going quick they're going slow I don't know super motion we're going to turn into the flash I don't know you're going to break into someone's house and use their pool or something. Am I getting my celebrity gossip right? Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to get some rest, actually. Yeah. It might be for the best. Something tells me we'll all need our strength. Yeah, too right. Uh, okay, so that's... Um... I told you to get some rest. The journey ahead won't be pleasant. The sea is angry today. Uh, Alright, uh... Party told me to say, what was... What was all that? I wish I could tell you, but I have no idea where it led. And I don't want to know. All I know is that I was supposed to show you the way. The question was whether you were meant to see it through. It seems you were. Strange. So many have transported me somewhere. We were certainly built by the Ford dwellers I on. don't need to know, and I don't really want to know. You can explain it all to my patron when we get to our destination. Interesting. Your patron? Everyone's working for someone. But don't even hope I'll tell you who I'm working for. You've proven you're a survivor. You still haven't proven we can trust you. Okay. All you need to know for now is that we're heading towards the Horns of the South. There, we're going to take Excalibur and then be on our way. The Excalibur? Yes, the one and only. Listen, I can see you have a lot of questions, but I truly have questions. no intention of answering them. Maybe you can just get some rest instead. Rest? And that's going to give it to us? Well, we'll have to see about that, won't we? Okay, well, cool. That's our sale. You have decided to trust Caradoc, at least for now. You have embarked on your journey towards the Horns of the South, but as soon as you found yourselves at sea, black clouds gathered over your heads, like tangible proof that there is some curse on you. Soon the wind was howling and the gargantuan waves were towering over you. You found yourselves in the heart of a storm. The only thing you remember is the deafening roar of cracking wood, and then darkness. You open your eyes. You are alive. Alive? And, uh, yeah, I'm assuming that'll be a cutscene or something one day, but, you know, early access. Um, those swords, far too big. Like, there's, uh, you can't swing that. That's silly. No wonder they've just been left there. Impractical. Uh, so, yeah, we have, um, we have the whole open world thing going on now. See? Like, castle over there. Looks like we can go into those, those mountains somewhere. Don't really know. Well, we'll have to we'll have to see, won't we? We'll have to see another day, but not yet because my schedule's really busy. Uh, I really wanted to do this game, though. I really wanted to cover it. Um, I really love the world. I think it's really interesting. Um, it is something I will revisit for sure. I might. It might just be a case that there's a monster over there. All right, I'm gonna club this to death. Hang on. Uh, it might be a case that I will end up just playing some of this in my own time, and I'll decide just to record some more. Uh, oh my god. No, thank you. I'm not a corpse, okay? You don't want to eat me. I'm not a corpse. <laughs> oh, hang on. I think he's trying to remedy that. Oh dear. Well, we got it. Um, but yeah, so my, uh, I might end up just playing some and recording it and then sticking the odd big episode on the channel. I don't know. I may just come back to it when there's been a proper update. Um, if you want to to find out then only time will tell um so subscribe hit the notification bell and you will know when it happens so anyway guys if you enjoyed this comment like subscribe i'll see you in the next one take care guys